in this video I'm going to introduce you to the concept of figured bass for seventh chords. Now we've already looked at figured bass for triads and we've observed that there is different figured bass for root position, first inversion and second inversion triads. And again, that the figured bass works because you have a bass note with some numbers and the numbers tell you interval distances above that bass note that create a chord, a triad in the case of the basic triads that we have looked at. But in this case, there's going to, the chord that's going to be created is going to be a four note chord and it's going to create a seventh chord of some kind. Now, because we are creating a seventh chord, as you would expect, there's an extra number. If you are given a bass note and you need two more notes to make a triad, you're going to have two additional numbers to create a triad. If you are given a bass note and you need three more notes to create a four note triad, a uh, four note seventh chord, then you will need three additional numbers to give you a total of four notes, the bass note plus three more. So if we now take these numbers, which I've already written up for you because they're very similar in principle to the ones that you found for triads. This is a root position. For a root position, you have 7, 5, and 3 underneath the bass note. For first inversion, 6, 5, 3. For second inversion, 6, 4, 3. For third inversion, remember that because you have four notes, you can have root position or three possible inversions before you get back to root position. So for third inversion, 6, 4, 2. These are the figures that you would see underneath a bass note to tell you that you have a seventh chord in root position, first inversion, second inversion, or third inversion. Okay? Now, let's go over here and actually map that out so you can see it. Root position, 7, 5, 3. You have a chord and it would have 7, 5, 3 underneath it. If I follow up from there and count the intervals, let's start at the bottom, 3, 1, 2, 3, gives me this note. 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, gives me this note. 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, gives me this note. 7, 5, 3, notice, creates a root position 7th chord, F, A, C, E. It, at this point, it doesn't matter if it is a major minor 7th chord, a major major 7th chord, a diminished minor 7th chord, it doesn't, that doesn't matter. The key signature will help you figure that out. you still got to work that out because you need to know whether this is a major or minor or whatever type of triad and what type of 7th that is. And anyway, perhaps the context, maybe this is a 5 chord and you're going to know that's a major minor 7 because you're in a certain key and you've created a 5 7 chord so it's going to be a major minor 7 chord. That's all about context and about understanding music theory in a broader context. This just gives you four notes, and it tells you that this chord is made up of F, A, C, and E. That's all it's telling you. You then determine how to space those notes out, and you have to know that those notes create a particular type of seventh chord. Now, let's take the same principle and look at first inversion. If this is a first inversion chord, then the note you're given must be the third of the chord, because first inversion chords have the third of the chord in the bass. Now, if I count up those intervals, I should end up with a first inversion seventh chord. One, two, three, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, the notes that I have ended up generating are F, A, C, E from the given figures, 6, 5, 3. I have created an F7 chord. I have created F, A, C, E. What I have also done, because we started with the third of the chord, is created that chord in first inversion. So 6, 5, 3 creates a first inversion 7 chord. Now we can logically go on and look at the next one, 6, 4, 3. And again, if I count up, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All the same notes, F, A, 
C, C, and E. F, A, C, E. The same four notes that you have had from the very beginning because now we have the same chord in second inversion because the fifth of the chord is the bass note. Same principle. I can start now from another pitch. In this case, this is the seventh. F, A, C, E. The seventh is now in the bass. And if I have six, four, two under any note, it will create a third inversion. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Six, four, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, one, two. I think I miscounted that on one of those. It's six, four, two. You can see I counted that up. If I go up two, one, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. I create six, four, two, giving me F, A, C, E. I have the same basic chord that I started with, this time with the seventh of the chord in the bass, meaning it's the third inversion. Again, basic principles here. The key signature is in play. So the type of seventh chord is determined by the key signature and the context. Also, this tells me nothing about where those notes should go above. All I know for sure is that this note is the bass note and that this, this series of numbers has generated the other notes for the chord. I then have to find the correct place to put them that's logical in the context of the voice leading. And we'll get to that in subsequent videos. Today, what you need to take from this is that there is figured bass for seventh chords, and you need to understand how from any given note you can generate a chord in an inversion. And that kind of then comes back and can sort of flips on itself in the sense that you can also say, if I see these figures, that tells me immediately I know that I must be dealing with a seventh chord in either root position, first inversion, second inversion, or third inversion. And that can be useful information to know as you are trying to create a progression or fill in a chord progression. So, if you have that much in mind, then go on to the next video, the third video on figured bass, talks about some conventions for use of figured bass and a few other little pieces of information you need to know about figured bass that is helpful to have as we move forward. Thank you.